Welcome to Prince's Park for the final installment of Continental Cup's quarter-final action. A romantic night under the lights on Valentine's Day. Championship outfit London City Lionesses welcome current holders Arsenal with a semi-final tie at home to Aston Villa. The prize for the victor. This fixture was due to take place last week but was called off due to a waterlogged pitch. Since that date, the hosts have sacked their manager and both teams have exited the Adobe FA Women's Cup, adding extra significance, especially for Arsenal, who have aims to add some silverware to their trophy cabinet this campaign. Let's talk you through the starting 11s for both teams. Starting with our hosts, there is one change for London City. Former Aston Villa midfielder Rusha Littlejohn replaced by Izzy Rose. And there is plenty of experience in this pride pack. Most notably, two former Gunners, Emma McCandy and Danielle Carter. Just under 200 Arsenal appearances between them. How they would like to cause an upset this evening. Jonas Ardabal makes seven changes to the side, narrowly beaten by Manchester City at the weekend. Manuela Zinsberger starts in goal. Kim Little skippers the side, while Steph Catley, Leah Valti, Chloe Lacasse, Leia Kadina and Stina Blacksenius are the other changes made. Blacksenius will be leading the line tonight. She has five goals to her name in this competition so far and scored a hat-trick in the last round outing to Reading. She will aim to use tonight as an audition to start more regularly for the visitors. Now this is the third meeting between these two teams. Arsenal has scored five goals over those encounters, each of them scored by the influential Viviana Miedema. The Dutch international missed the weekend and tonight's encounter with a slight knee irritation. So it will be down to someone else to do the all important business putting the ball into the back of the net should Arsenal wish to make safe passage to the semi-finals. For London City Lionesses, they've made club history by progressing through to the quarter-finals of this competition for the very first time in their history. It has been a tough 2024 so far for the home team, but a sellout crowd here this evening is a potentially perfect tonic to score their first goal of the year and secure their first victory to boot as well. Both teams are playing in their home kits, London City Lionesses in the aqua blue tops, navy shorts with navy socks and Arsenal who have won this competition more times than any other with the red tops, white shorts and white socks. It will be the visitors to kickstart proceedings here and we will find out who completes the semi-final lineup of the Continental Cup. Chelsea, Manchester City have both won this competition. They face each other in the semi-final and Aston Villa awaits whoever can edge this contest as Arsenal gets underway. The delay is finally over and this London derby can begin. Ruben Moy analyzes her options and squares it out to the right hand side. The first forward move of the game for Arsenal. Ruben Moy finds Volti. Caitlin Ford for Arsenal on the attack. Draws out the players around her and gets the shot away. It's an early strike. And it forces an early save from Grace Maloney in the London City Lionesses goal. Arsenal showing their intent early on here. It's a fantastic drive forwards and a sharp shot from Ford. Ford scored in the last round as well for the Gunners. A 6 0 crushing of Reading. Less than 90 seconds on the 
outboxed Arsenal have a first shot on target and now can London City Lionesses produce something of their own Fitzgerald back to Maloney it's a good interception in midfield and Danielle Carter looking to link up she does so plays the ball out to the left hand side Chantel Boyhalorka thinks about the shot really good decision to play it out to the right hand side where Lois Joel gets the cross in and it whistles over the crossbar a really good opportunity for the London City Lionesses skipper just not the quite the quality she would have liked to deliver and the service she would have liked to have provided to her teammates London City Lionesses managed this evening by Darren Smith, the goalkeeping coach at the football club after Carolina Marachi was sacked. Around about the same time this match was due to kick off. Smith oversaw the defeat to Liverpool at the weekend. And looks to put together a master plan to try to contain Arsenal who after back-to-back -back losses will be wanting to put on a positive display tonight. Emma McCandy remonstrating with the officials that that should be a goal kick, but it is an Arsenal corner, their first of the match. Steph Catley to take. And the left-footed delivery comes in. And the header's there. Chloe Lacasse making a good connection to it. Not quite the placement that she would have wanted. London City. They look to play out from the back. The ball played short to... Georgia Brougham. And this is dangerous play from London City Lionesses. The press from Arsenal almost causing havoc as Emma McCandy gives away possession. Stina Blacksenius with the shot. Stina Blacksenius manages to win back possession, lays it off to Catley. The pressure is intense from Arsenal. In the opening four minutes of play. Ford has Catley in support. Who over on that far left hand side holding up play back to Ruben Moy. Whilst London City Lionesses are on the attack, the referee blows her whistle as Chloe Lacasse appears to have taken a knock to the face and will require some treatment early on here. Skipper Kim Little sprints over to check in on her teammate. How important a player Kim Little is for Arsenal. Came on at the weekend, starts tonight, and we can just see there a bit of a coming together, and then it is the loose right arm that makes contact with Chloe Lacasse. And I mentioned earlier on how significant the season is now for Arsenal, who are supported in big numbers tonight. Arsenal have visited the FA Cup, six points off of Chelsea in the Women's Super League title race is no longer in their hands and they did of course exit the Champions League back in September a shootout defeat to Paris following a very dramatic three all draw it means that keeping a hold of this piece of silverware is even more important and they've made a bright start this evening
you wonder how long London City Lionesses will persist with the playing out for the back strategy. Arsenal's press won them possession just yards out from goal, but they were unable to capitalise early on, and we now see a break in that momentum that Arsenal were building, and London City were trying to hit on the counter attack. on her feet, which is greeted with a warm round of applause from the Arsenal contingent, just yards away, many of whom were travelling to Dartford to support their side last week before news came of the postponement. I think many went to catch the other Continental Cup quarterfinals that were taking place that night. Iron up the opposition that could be waiting for Arsenal should they overcome London City Lionesses tonight and it is the home team who have the ball throw him out to the left hand side and there's a clash there a late foul referee blows up Arsenal have the free kick which McCabe will take looks to take it quickly but Nicole Douglas standing over the ball Played and City nil, Arsenal nil. for London City Linus is looks to play it long is shut down Go out for a throw in for the home team as we await the arrival of the all important accessory you need for a continental cup quarter final the ball Candy throws it long. Looks for Boy Haloka. He's scored two braces already as London City Lioness is topped Group C. Stina Blackstenius looks to cut the ball back. It's dealt with by Paige Culver, who has the ball and calmly slots it to her left to McCandy. Arsenal looking to trap the hosts into the final third. Plenty of bodies committed forward from both teams and from the City Lioness is struggling to get the ball out of their half. All Arsenal's outfield players now committed to creating something to break the deadlock. Good hustling from Carter, but nice play from Arsenal. Space opening up down this right-hand side. Stina Blackstenius on the edge of the box. Wanted that ball a bit quicker. Arsenal will have to reset and it doesn't work as effectively as they would like. And now London City Lionesses have the chance to attack. Arsenal have plenty of bodies to cover this. But the space evades nevertheless. Bit of a let-off for Arsenal there.
a very congested midfield and Arsenal do really well to spread out play to this left-hand side where Ford resides. Out to Catley. Last turn by Ford. The shot comes in. It takes a deflection. It will be another corner for Arsenal. Nice skill. Short by the Gunners. Okay, back to Catley. Little finds McCabe. A slightly short pass to Catley, who does really well and drives into the box for Arsenal. Produces the cross cleared by London City Line. That is only as far as McCabe. Looks to find Ford. It's cut out by the home team. Lifted in by Clover, nodded out for a throw in by Fitzgerald. Leobati to Ruben Moy. Three players surrounding Steph Catley there. But Ford latches onto that opportunity, cuts it back. This is a promising Arsenal move. Kim Little just checks her shoulder to see who's in support. And Katie McCabe is there for Arsenal. Kadina and McCabe into this change passes. Ruben Moy on the edge of the circle. Have a lovely ball out to Caitlin Ford. Good defending from the home team. Under pressure, but withstanding it so far. It's been a tough, tough January. London City Lionesses. A year that began with a 2-0 defeat to local rivals Crystal Palace. A 1-0 loss here at Prince's Park to Birmingham. It was followed by the same scoreline against Blackburn. And the 2 0 loss at the weekend in the Super League side, Liverpool. That led to the sacking of the manager. But with all that being said, it's still an exciting time if you're a London City Lioness fan. News came in December before Christmas that Michelle Kang had acquired the football club. Kang, who is the majority owner of Washington Spirit and Olympic Lyon exciting plans for London City Lionesses as Danielle Carter tries her luck from range. Kang has spoken about her vision for the football club and you wonder what will the appointment look like here at Prince's Park? Will it be a short-term fix till the end of the season with maybe longer-term aspirations secured in the summer? The only problem is if you look at London City Lionesses form in the division and where they currently stand, 10th, it does not look pretty. Dina black has the ball for Arsenal, looks to try and win her side a corner, and she does so. Senny is such a willing runner, hustling away. With a quarter of an hour chalked up already, the home team will be pleased with the way they've defended so far. Pleased with the fact that they've managed to shut out Arsenal until this point. And the visitors do something about that. From this corner. The ball comes in. And it falls nicely to Ford. Some last ditch defending clears it for London City Lionesses.
Popalova has options. Happening. Back to Volpe. Nice play from Arsenal. Just runs out of play. Arsenal will be looking to try and exploit the space that they can create down either flank and get some crosses in to the box. So if they can latch on to any loose balls or secondary phases of play. Lacasse presses. Backed up by Little. And there we talk about that space and that width that Arsenal will be looking to manufacture. It's about delivery now. Can Lacasse pull the trigger, plays it back. Switched out onto the left hand side. Ruben Moy manages to pick out Kim Little. Not the neatest, but Arsenal still have the ball. Hatley off balance, and it enables London City Lionesses to win the ball back. positive perhaps of the postponement to last week's fixture it means that it is half term week for a lot of younger football fans many of whom can afford to have a late night out midweek to come and watch this London derby unfold no goals as yet it's been all Arsenal pressure than a strike from Caitlin Ford after a couple of minutes. Grace Maloney hasn't been called into action as much as Gunners Bostiona Seidevel would have liked. The delivery's into the ball. The delivery's into the box. Rather limited. The candy looks to pressure Lacasse. Kim Little with her back to goal. Plays it back. Ruben Moy. Spreads the pass through. So many bodies back for London City Lionesses. Arsenal finding it hard to pick out that final clinical pass. Ford. Gets the cross in. And it was Lacasse who's on the end of it, squared it back, and London City Lionesses. Clear the danger once again. There's space over on that right hand side. Acres of it, in fact. Now the gap's been closed slightly, but Arsenal still working the ball well. Arsenal plays it back to Ford. The cross comes in. Cena Blacksenius is there. Wave after wave of Arsenal attack. There's space for Catley. Pass. It's a poor one. Is Darren Smith, the caretaker boss, arrived at London City Lionesses from West Ham. He started his coaching career 
with Ipswich Towns Academy before making the switch to West Ham to join as professional development phase goalkeeping coach. Also has some international experience with Wales as well. And with that goalkeeping background in mind, he'll be really pleased with how Grace Maloney and the players ahead of her have defended. And managed to keep the score goalless with over 20 minutes played. It's an Arsenal team who's been a little bit bruised following their defeat against Manchester City at the weekend. Shock loss, of course, to West Ham the week before that. But this Arsenal team has resilience and it has grit, it has talent as well, as was displayed in their convincing victory against Chelsea. And that is a golden opportunity again for Caitlin Ford to break the deadlock. And it again comes from a good delivery in. From the right hand side from Katie McCabe. Arsenal need to get more deliveries like that into the box. First time front footed. It's forward. It's another shot away for the visitors. That this delivery wasn't dealt with and it fell kindly to Ford who it first time. Good hold up play from the Cole Douglas. He wins her team a free kick. Really efficient centre forward play from the new sign in. The candy back to Graham. out to the left hand side. And Arsenal double up to win back possession and comfortably so can Little. Gets the ball caught under her feet somewhat but still manages to pick out the pass. Pull over back to Kadina. The long searching ball finds the pass and isn't able to control it first time but Kinlis was there and the pass will link up with McCabe corner will be taken by Katie McCabe, the Republic of Ireland skipper. Such an influential player for Arsenal as well. McCabe was the Gunners player of the season last season. She's won this competition twice as well. Looking for a hat-trick as the delivery comes in. with another chance. Arsenal create something. As the shot comes in from Pullover. It's a touch on its way towards goal as well. So Arsenal will have another corner on the other side. It's a nice turn. And her attempt means Arsenal get another corner. Backed up a few so far in the opening 25 minutes. Patley. Oh, bobbling around. The penalty spot. Ruben Moy battling away. Surrounded by blue shirts. Controls and holds it up well for Arsenal. And finds the pass as well. Ball bouncing around, eventually cleared by McCandy. The 
Toronto fans. Thank you. Appreciation known for the players. As they attack once again, Arsenal. And they find a way of breaking the deadlock. It's an overcoming this stubborn London City Lionesses side. They've defended so well as a unit so far this evening. Gerald who took the brunt of that challenge back up on her feet. Good ball forward to McCandy. Good direct play from the home team. We were able to really advanced up the pitch with three decent passes. But that advance comes to little and now it's back to defending. It's Katie McCabe. We'll take the throw in for Arsenal. Tries to thread the ball through to Kim Little. Groves with the ball forward, and that will be dealt with by Zinsberger. It's a long direct ball forward. Straight from centre back to centre forward. Maybe Arsenal need to pull that more direct trigger a little bit more often. Find a way of taking the advantage this evening. We are approaching half an hour on the clock. Still, London City Lioness is nil, Arsenal nil in the quarter final of the Continental Cup. It is the winners of Group C versus the winners of Group D. Nothing to separate the sides so far. Arsenal have been dominant on the ball, as you would expect from the Women's Super League side. doing well, standing up to the challenge. Scored. It's a little. The shot comes in. Lucas down that right-hand side has had plenty of involvement so far for Arsenal. It's a good run into the box. Ball hit first time. have had 77% possession so far this evening. This is a rare attacking move for London City Lionesses. And it's one that doesn't last for too long as Arsenal pick up the ball. 
forward to Blacksenius. Good hold up play from Danielle Carter. Looked to play the pass to Joel. It came off rather fortuitously off the boot of Patney for a throw in. Relentless display so far from Arsenal. We spent long, long phases in the London City Lionesses half, yet still can't find the breakthrough. Ford of space to run into for Arsenal. Ford looks to get the shot away, and that's good goalkeeping from Maloney once again. Ford's pace is frightening. She managed to navigate the ball around Culver to get in on goal, but Maloney was there with the block. Teammates, of course, with McCabe on internationals. Girls in green making history together at the World Cup. We know all about what McCabe can produce from corners. The delivery comes in as a sea of blue shirts around Cena Blackstenius. over on this left-hand side now. As is Lacasse. Also try and find a way around this London City Lionesses side. He's frustrated them for nearly 35 minutes. from London City Lionesses. Can Arsenal exploit the mistake? Can they punish London City with a bit more clinical finishing? There's 10 minutes left until half time. The ball comes in. Yet again, the wall of London City Lionesses defenders avert the danger. They're going to have to defend again as has been the rhythm and theme of this opening half so far. But defend they do, and defend diligently. And that's good play, and there's a trip as well. A bit of frustration from Danielle Carter there. But the game plan's working.
Now time for London City's Lionesses to apply the attacking pressure. And that was a moment. There might not be too many of them. A bit of space opening up for the hosts. Regardless of the scoreline this evening, it is a historic night for London City Lionesses through to the quarterfinals for the first time in the club's history. It's been a massive week. Hosting Liverpool on Sunday, this this evening, and then back in action on Sunday, they'll welcome Durham, who are in seventh place in the Barclays Championship. The home team currently sits 10th. Level on points with Watford, who are in the bottom two, alongside Lewis, who have a game in hand. It's a perilous situation for London City Lionesses. But that can wait a few days. It's all about going toe to toe with Arsenal, and that is exactly what the home team are doing. Nil nil. McCabe with the delivery. And the head is there by Cena Black Senius. And then the final touch looks to have come. Off of Lacasse. We'll have a look at the replay to confirm that. But the deadlock has been broken. It's come from a set piece. It's come from a Katie McCabe delivery. Laxenius is nod towards goal, and it was an important last touch from Chloe Lacasse. London City Lioness is nil, Arsenal one. And that goal has sparked some noise from the travelling supporters. They've got their breakthrough. There's less than 10 minutes until the break. Arsenal on the attack again. Another good delivery into a dangerous, dangerous area, and it falls almost kindly to Stina Black Senius. The candy wasn't able to deal with the danger. The ball was bobbling around. She just wondered would there be enough space for Black Senius to navigate and turn her body in time, but the ball trickling into the gloves of Grace Maloney, who's had a sublime evening so far it hadn't been for her saves Arsenal could have been ahead much earlier in this game as it stands just the one goal the difference between the two as we enter the final five minutes of this opening half Chloe Lacasse's goal the difference Maloney just requiring her boots to be laced. This is a chance for London City Lionesses to get those outfield players up the pitch, go long, go direct, and see if they can create some problems for Arsenal between now and the break. 
is actually a goal from a goal kick, which was the difference between London City Lionesses and their championship counterparts, Blackburn, in their last league out in here. Route one football. Okay, Blackburn their goal and their three points. As London City Lioness has looked to mix it up a bit. Carter driving forwards. Kadina defending diligently for the visitors. Goes it out to Volte. If you're an Arsenal fan or, or more just a football fan in all, I would really recommend going onto Arsenal's website and have a look at the breakdown interview. Leah Volte discusses the evolution of her role over her five seasons at Arsenal. It's a really fascinating listen. It's a really great tactical insight from a player who is a firm, firm favourite. Part of Arsenal's midfield. Another firm favourite is McCabe, whose corner delivery played a pivotal part. Just wondered then, was she going to get involved in this set piece as well? But McCabe walks into the 18 yard area. Catley will take. Lifts both arms aloft. Lapeted. Curling delivery. Falls to the edge of the box. Cross comes in, hooked back by McCabe. Nice run from McCabe. Really nice delivery as well. Ford unable to control and get the shot away how she would have liked from Arsenal. They seem to be finding a bit of a rhythm as we head towards the half-time whistle. There's been a few rotations across the pitch. London City Linus has proved to be a stubborn opposition. Douglas again doing well to win a free kick for the home team. Less than 30 seconds to go of the opening 45. Candy has the ball on the halfway line, plays it back. Groves coming into the side for London City this evening. Finds Douglas. Douglas doing really well. Nice drop of the shoulder. And really nice delivery as well. Headed clear by Arsenal. Kim Little plays it forwards to Black Senius, who's dropped deep. Has teammates all around her. And plays it out to the left hand side where Catley can link up with Ford once again. Said that many times so far this evening. Ford keeps the ball in play, but fouls the London City Lioness defender. So we will have three additional minutes to this opening half. There was a slight pause in play earlier on in the game when Chloe Lacasse required treatment after receiving a knock to the face. Her goal is the difference. A header from close range from a deflected Katie McCabe corner. Arsenal have registered. Nine shots 
in this half so far. Three of them on target. They had seven corners as well, and perhaps that might be at the front of Jonas Idabel's mind going into the halftime team talk. How can Arsenal make that dominance count and take a more comfortable control of this quarterfinal tie? A reminder, it is a competition. Arsenal have won more times than any other football club. Six League Cup titles. Manchester City have four and Chelsea have two. One of those will be in the final at Molyneux on the 31st of March. Man City will be hosting Chelsea in the other semi-final. London City Lionesses or Arsenal will host Aston Villa, a home tie, the reward for whoever comes out victorious tonight. He looks to play it back, but it's a poor pass. And Cena Black Senis is in on goal. Maloney off her line. And the referee points to the penalty spot. And Grace Maloney is furious. We'll see on the replay here. It was McCandy, the former Gunners player, looking to play the ball back. I'm not entirely sure who she was trying to pick out with the pass. It was a poor one. It forced Maloney off her line. And it gives Arsenal the perfect opportunity to double their lead and grasp a firmer grip on this quarter-final tie. Kim Little stands over the ball. Little scored a penalty in the final at Selhurst Park last year. This is a big moment too for the Gunners. But Grace Maloney knows a thing or two about big moments as well. Little up against Maloney as Arsenal look to double their advantage before half time. It's the skipper who finds the back of the net. You can always depend on Kim Little in the big moments to step up. Little utilising all of her experience. Calm and composed. Slots the ball home and it is London City Lionesses nil. Arsenal two. Class from the captain. And that might just make the half-time team talk a little easier for Jonas Idabel. And a little harder for Darren Smith, who will take a lot of pride in the way his team has defended for long, long periods of this first half. Carter. Loses out to Ford. Little. With a ball over the top to Blackstenius. He's done well to win the penalty. Can we see a third before the break? Almost. And there is the half-time whistle. Current holders, Arsenal, had to work for it. But they have established a comfortable two-goal cushion heading into the break here at Prince's Park. It is London City Lionesses nil, Arsenal two. Well, let's take a look back at the highlights of the opening 45 minutes of action here. Arsenal started the game brightly. Caitlin Ford with this shot from distance forced an early save from Grace Maloney. London City Lioness has had a little opening of their own as well. The skipper, Lois Joel, with an opportunity to get a delivery into the box. But after that moment, it really was wave after wave of Arsenal attack. Grace Maloney again integral to keeping and shutting Arsenal out. Chloe Lacasse with an opportunity, hitting the ball first time before the goal eventually did come. A corner from Peyton McCabe, nodded down towards goal by Cena Blacksenius, and eventually the final touch from Chloe Lacasse. 
the goal had been coming and the resistance came to an end courtesy of that moment. But just before half time, Stina Black Stenius latched onto a short pass, won the penalty, and the skipper, Kim Little, made absolutely no mistake from 12 yards out. It puts Arsenal in a commanding position over their championship counterparts at the break. A reminder that the prize for the winner of this tie is a home draw in the semi-final against Aston Villa. The second half to come here on FA Player at the break. It is London City Lionesses nil, Arsenal 2. Denton will find Atkinson, and it still is the Atkinson! Real precision into the corner. Still looking for a second, though, as we approach the 20-minute mark. This is Kit Graham to strike one. Well, she had time to turn. Ayane will claim the assist, but this is all about Kit Graham and the quality of the shots and for the delivery. Crosses have been good so far. It's cleared away. Rouse will take a touch and go for goal. Ronfuss, the keeper, took it really early. And still going forward here. It's a good run and it's a fine shot. Reading defenders backpedaling. Here is Sophia Fell. Southampton fired across the box and flicked beautifully. What a finish that is. And it was Lexi Lloyd Smith with a moment of sublime skill. Something that the game really, really needed. In the surroundings, you wouldn't expect the sublime skill. Look at that, a little flick. Now then, this is Martha Thomas in between defenders. It's a really good first touch. What about the second? Oh, that's clever. She didn't panic. Another excellent finish. Reading put to the sword here. Spurs have been ruthless. Excellent ball over the top by Clinton towards Martha Thomas. And she did the rest. Six of the best from Tottenham. Drops to her left hand side. Plenty of time to pick out the cross. Comes all the way through. Neville is arriving. Oh, what a finish! Grace Neville puts the home side ahead. Four minutes into the second half. A wonderful goal. And London City Lionesses lead. In a nice central position. A good run up. Palmer breaks the deadlock. And what a stunning free kick. Two teams who have done so well in the start of their seasons, it's taken a moment of quality from a dead ball scenario to separate them after 34 minutes. Great technique from Palmer. Going behind, here's uh, Danielle Carter looking to try and make things happen. Lays it off to Lois Joel, who thinks about the shot from distance. Oh, it's crept all the way in. The home side, a level. 21 minutes on the clock, and it crept under Dowsett. And we're all square. Forward here to Kelly. It's a second chance. Kelly strikes one. Oh, that is magnificent from Chloe Kelly. Wow. Initially comes off the foot of Hines, sat up to be hit. And my goodness me, it was hit. Bottom of the WSL, no points from their first five games. You'd have got long odds on that. Here they come, they're looking for a second. They've got a second. Two goals in as many minutes for Rachel Daly. A lovely, clever, improvised finish after Adriana Leon's teasing cross. 2-1 at Everton. Hines helps it on to Enderby, who's got past Horton magnificently. It's Mia Enderby, and it's 4-3. In the sixth minute of stoppage time, some faint hope for Liverpool from one of their stars of the future. A first goal for the club. Mia Enderby and what a goal it was Ryan Doyle will chest it down it's towards Molly Lambert that's a clever touch and that's a fine finish Molly Lambert with her second of the season in all competitions smart shot into the corner that's the touch the movement is excellent and it's Durham the lead Reading with the throw five minutes or so remaining that's a little loose win towards Dean, who slides in, might fall for Lloyd Smith! 
two in two in the League Cup for Lexi Lloyd-Smith. And with five minutes remaining, she may well have won it here for Southampton. It's a terrific finish from Lexi Lloyd-Smith. Chase. Still with it, Chase. Going for goal and gets it. Well, that's her first goal in a Manchester United shirt. The Brazilian giving Manchester United their sixth goal here against Everton. The odds are more than the ball is in the back of the net, off the bar. And Frida Leonard Zamorna has the opener for Arsenal. And a quick turnover of play. Sees Leonard Zamorna find the back of the net for Arsenal. Miyazawa. To Rivier. Come back to her. Good cross in. Great goal from Nikita Paris to give Manchester United the lead. Lovely delivery from Riviere, and Paris was there to make contact.
Welcome back to Prince's Park, where holders Arsenal have one foot in the Continental Cup semi-finals as they lead London City Lionesses 2-0. The championship hosts defended admirably for long periods. It took 39 minutes for Arsenal to take the lead. A corner from the left met by Sina Blackstenius. Chloe Lacasse was able to divert her teammates header towards goal to give the visitors a deserved advantage, which was doubled before the break. Blackstenius involved again, latching on to a poor ball played back by former gunner Emma McCandy. Skipper Kim Little stepped up to convert from 12 yards out in front of a sellout crowd here in Dartford. We've got 45 minutes more of this London derby to come, and it is the hosts who will kickstart the proceedings. London City Lionesses have the ball and it's played forward looking for former gunner Danielle Carter who spent several years playing in a red shirt tonight she's trying to make something happen in blue to halve the deficit it's been a tough time for London City Lionesses they're without a manager yet to score a goal or win a game in 2024 but you wouldn't be able to tell they've played with a degree of bravery and resilience so far this evening they've made a little bit of history in the making as well it's the first time they've reached the quarterfinal stage of the continental cup competition but make no mistake about it they will still have belief in abundance that they can try and turn this scoreline around they'll need to be brave and they'll need to try something different from the first half where arsenal dominated possession Stranger things have happened in football. Arsenal on the attack over on the far left-hand side. <laughs> Packed out Prince's Park. A huge travelling contingent of Arsenal supporters. They can see if their side can tee up a home tie against Aston Villa. The class, the goal scorer. Plays it back. And has the ball over on that right hand side. Backed up by McCabe. Republic of Ireland International, the captain for her country. Good build up play down the right hand side from Arsenal. Patient, perhaps not precisely the pass. McCandy clears, but that clearance falls to Catley. Sloppy, not a Ruben Moy. And now the home team can try and make something happen, but keep defending. Arsenal can't afford any complacency this evening on the ball. They'll want to do better as Ford, just unable to control it. Keeps the ball in play, however. Catley's there to support the two combining like they've done on many occasions so far this evening. And there's some space for the cast to work with there. The cast driving inside. Chesting the ball down and it goes out for the goal kick. Grace Maloney had a really impressive opening 45 minutes. Conceded the penalty, was furious with the decision. Couldn't do anything to stop the strike from Kim Little. That's another loose back pass from London City Lionesses. This time it does go unpunished. Arsenal hunting in packs in the final third, latching on to any little moment like that. 
to try and extend their advantage further. Groves. Shadowed by Little, and just to play it back to Broham. Now McCandy. Under pressure. Feeds it back to Broham. Heist unable to string any passes together further than that. Pullover plays it back to Kadena, who will advance into the London City Lionesses half. Plays it back to her centre back partner. It's a good ball out to Catley. Seven versus seven over on that far left hand side. There's Joel. Stopping the cross. London City Lionesses did really, really well for long periods in the first half. The referee getting in the way of the pass. Play will resume. No stoppage there as Arsenal. Press once again. Good skill from Ford. Cross comes in. It's cleared the seconds as well, but can Arsenal do something with the thirds? Little. With good quick feet. Unable, though, to find the pass. And Kate McCabe comes in with the challenge. And Chantel Boyer Lorca, who's scored. All four of London City Lionesses goals in the competition. A brace against Watford. And a brace against Crystal Palace as well. Those two victories. Alongside a draw was enough to secure top spot of Group C for the home team. Steph Catley will be... I have a quick word to check in on her teammate, Caitlin Ford, who needs some treatment. We may well see first substitution of the game as a result. Not just one change by the looks of it, but two. How about that for strength and depth? Three changes, in fact. Beth Mead, Frieda Marnham. And it looked like Kyra Cooney Cross as well. Triple change for the Addicts. The only side of Al in shot. Overseeing and orchestrating those changes. First of those changes coming off is Victoria Pullover. Coming on, Frida Marnham, who has had a fantastic track record scoring goals in this competition. Kim Little, Caitlin Ford also making way for Beth Mead, Kyra Cooney Cross. Quality for quality, and that is women's Super League pedigree summed up for the visitors. Douglas, as well, to find Boy Halorka. Douglas really setting them into life well for London City Lionesses following her move from Washington Spirit. She's really athletic, a real nice physical side to her game as well. 
probably grow in confidence the more time she gets playing in a London City Lionesses shirt. The home team can take some confidence from the corner that they have won. Their first of the game. What an opportune moment to half the deficit for London City Lionesses. Joel, the captain. Right footed. Headed away. Only so far as McCandy. Beth Mead's first touch of the game is a defensive one. To stop that ball going out to Joel. McCandy, one of London City Lioness' most decorated players. Former WSL player has five domestic crowns to her name. Throw-in comes to Little. As Arsenal look to gallop down that right-hand flank. Win the throw-in. Much to the frustration of Darren Smith, the caretaker boss. Pushing forwards for Arsenal. Okay. Twisting, turning. Eventually loses the ball. London City Lionesses play it forward down the left hand side. It's dealt with by Arsenal, but then given away. Douglas looks to pick out Joel and. Burgers off her line, deals with the danger, and now Arsenal can attack. That's Denius. The ball's creeping around. And the shot comes in. And that is the third, the second of the evening for Chloe Lacasse. A fine finish. Arsenal mounted that attack quickly and purposefully. And it all but seals their place in the next round of the competition. We we'll see again the good work started by Stina Blackstenius, who's been involved in all three of Arsenal's goals this evening. There were plenty of willing runners into the box, which is what you're always going to need. And it wasn't necessarily the cleanest of pathways to Lacasse, but wow, the strike was certainly sweet and certainly clean. It means it is London City Lionesses nil, Arsenal three. won't let their heads drop, not in front of a sold out crowd here at Prince's Park. They have options on the bench as well. Some business was done in January to try and strengthen London City Lionesses who finished third in the league last season, three points off of Bristol City who got promoted. But currently are part of a relegation battle one they need to start picking points in. And that will start on Sunday against Durham. A really unique football club, now owned by Michelle Kang. They are the only fully independent women's only football club in England's top two professional leagues, which is no easy feat in the context of how the women's game has developed. Princess Park here is their home. It's also home to Dartford FC their men's and women's team. The men's team competed in the National League South. This pitch undertakes a lot of wear. And that's partly what contributed to the reason that last week's game was called off. I think there was something like four games scheduled in the space of a very, very short time indeed. And this game fell victim to some heavy downpours. But tonight, Arsenal have got back into business. 
after two losses and a really disappointing one at the weekend to Manchester City exit in the FA Cup. They will stay in the Continental Cup unless London City Lionesses can pull off something very, very special in the next half an hour. for the hat-trick this evening. Nice link-up play from Arsenal's attacking Arsenal. We're beginning to get a bit fired up this evening now. Well, adding some bite for the pride. Can they reduce the deficit? We're over the hour mark. A substantial lead for Arsenal. The character of London City Lioness is shining through. And that is miscontrolled. And Stina Black Stenius once again picking it up and looking start something for Arsenal. Stina Baxenius with five goals to her name in this competition so far. None this evening, but that doesn't mean she hasn't had a huge impact on the contest. Asks for the ball, gets it. And eventually gets played out to the right where Beth Mead is lurking. And Beth Mead with the first time ball. First time ball that Arsenal were lacking, finding it difficult to deliver in the opening half. Of course, tiredness beginning to creep in for the home team as well. That'll be something that the Gunners look to exploit and build their own confidence up after a tricky start to February. It was a great January, four wins in three different competitions, but with February came the 2 1 loss at West Ham and then the FA Cup exit. The huge game coming up at the weekend on Saturday. Arsenal host Manchester United, who've had it confirmed this evening that they have a new owner as well. So Jim Ratcliffe ratified as their boss at the helm, coordinating all things Manchester United, it seems, moving forward. So this is some lovely play moving forwards for Arsenal. The ball comes into Black Stenius, fantastic marking. Seven changes for Arsenal tonight from that side that lost at the weekend. Some using tonight as an opportunity to push to get into Yona Eidersfeld's sports for that big game against Man United. United four points behind Arsenal. We've produced some magic memories at the Emirates Stadium already this season. We'll be looking to do the same again. Mead. Back to Fadina. That's a really nice ball forward. It forces McCandy into action and Arsenal with yet another corner. They scored from one of them. Can they do the same again?
seven corners so far. Hatley will again deliver from this side. Not the best delivery. It's Lionesses can deal with, although the clearance is not the most convincing. It does the job. Throw in for the home team. And when you think about London City Lionesses, future, these are the kind of crowds that they're going to be wanting to get week in, week out. The ambition is there. They might be in a relegation battle this season. But with the investment to come, I expect they will be competing and pushing up the football pyramid. We've got a fantastic academy set up. A tier one pro game academy license, which means that in terms of the player pathway at London City Lionesses, it's about as elite as you can get the players from London and the South East. Olivia Fraser became the first player from the PGA talent to feature in the championships. So some real good foundations for London City to build upon. The last two games against Liverpool and Arsenal, markers of where the progress needs to be made. But nights like this in front of record-breaking crowds will, I'm sure, just whet the appetite further to build and grow this football club. <coughs> only for the independent women's only football club. In England's top two tiers. Up against statistically the most successful club in England women's football, Arsenal. We are 3 0 up. In control. We'll have the ball over on the far left hand side. Playing the ball out to the right hand side as Arsenal. Trying to find a way around the players camp behind the ball for London City Lionesses. Trying to lay the ball off to Blackstenius. Not quite the weight she would have wanted, and it rolls into the gloves of Grace Maloney. We joined London City Lionesses from Reading following the end of her contract. Signed a two year deal here. Okay, wins the ball for Arsenal. Heals it back to Mead. Nice touch from Mead. Wins the corner. Beth Mead. Warmly applauded. She 
take the ball over to the corner flag. She's only taken it there to leave it to Catley to receive the short pass. Before finding McCabe. McCabe with a rocket, it deflects. Katie McCabe can certainly score a spectacular goal or two. And on comes local lass, Alicia Russo. Russo coming on in place of Stina Blackstenius. No goals for us in number 25, but a huge contribution nevertheless. And there is a huge eruption of noise around Prince's Park. Alicia Russo's playing journey began not too far from here down at Beersted FC. Alicia Russo enjoyed to know and love the game at her local grassroots club. There'll be many, many young girls in this neck of the woods inspired to do exactly the same and go and join their local grassroots club courtesy of her and her exploits the England Lionesses for Manchester United and of course following her big summer move for the Arsenal as well. If you're the London City Lionesses defence though, you're thinking give me a break. 20 minutes up against one of the most promising, electrifying young centre forwards in world football. Russo is looking to try and get the ball back there, but reset, which is one of the best things to watch about her game, her movement off the ball as much as her finishing on it. Can also ensure that she gets plenty of delivery and service between now and full time. Frida Marnham. Substitutes combining down this right hand side. Beth Mead switching it up. It's Ruben Moy involved. Arsenal building slowly, but surely. Across him. And Russo's touch, her first of the game, is a goal. And it's Arsenal's fourth of the evening. Alicia Russo securing Arsenal's place in the semi final, putting it beyond any doubt at all. It was patient build up. Nice dummy run from Mead. But Marnham had even more time to get the delivery and pinpoint textbook centre forward play, textbook Alicia Russo goal scoring. 4 deal up, it triggers some changes for the visitors. Connie Schofield coming off. We've got Cohen coming on. Paige Satchel and Maddie Wilde as well.
flurry of changes for London City. Fifteen minutes ago, London City nine is nil, Arsenal four. Long ball over the top. And the seat lionesses have to recover here. The substitutions have to settle in straight away. No substitutions confirmed for you. The top left of your screen. Some fresh legs required. It's Arsenal. They're in the ascendancy. Needed a little bit of respite as Russo tracks back and breaks up play by getting a boot in there, and London City will have the throw in. Daniel Carter. He's down and requires treatment for London City Lionesses, the former Arsenal player, of course. He's with the club from 2009 to 2020. Over 100 appearances helped Arsenal win the inaugural Women's Super League. Won the FA Cup with them back in 2016 as well. The pause in proceedings enables London City Lionesses players to come over to their caretaker boss, Darren Smith. You can see some of the substitutes receiving further instruction. It's all about pride for the pride now. Flags are waving. Arsenal are in buoyant mood after back-to-back -back losses. They lead in the London derby. Set to progress to the semi-finals of the Continental Cup. A trophy that is high on the priority list. One to defend. One that they've won more than any other club. they can beat Aston Villa they will face either Manchester City or Chelsea two other clubs the only other two who have ever won the competition before that final is going to take place at Molyneux the 13th final of this competition on Sunday the 31st of March the semi-finals it's worth noting will take place across the 6th and 7th of March Arsenal achieved glory in front of a sellout crowd or a record crowd at Selhurst Park. Not a sellout of over 19,000. Stina Blackstenius, Kim Little, and Anid Charles' own goal. Made for a memorable day for the Gunners against their rivals, Chelsea.
Carter back on the pitch after receiving treatment does really well to drive the ball forwards tries to get the pass over to Maddie Wilde who made a decent run forwards but McCabe alert and intelligent enough to deal with that now Arsenal attack once more down this left hand side Bacass on for a hat trick as well let's not forget Ten minutes left to go. London City nil, Arsenal four. Two goals in the first half, two goals in the second so far. Marlon's shot is blocked. So sharp, so fit. Cass couldn't do anything to stop the ball going out of play there. And we're going to see some more changes. Jade Bailey introduced. And she will come on in place of Danielle Carter who had been struggling in the last couple of minutes or so. Carter, the former Gunners player, receiving a very warm round of applause from home and away supporters. How vital a part she will have between now and the end of the season. Arsenal with a change as well. Katie McCabe coming off. Vivian Lea coming on for Arsenal. Mead has the ball. Goes it out to the right hand side. It's another corner. This is the first senior appearance. For Leah. Nice opportunity to showcase to the Arsenal supporter base what she can offer. Her side in a commanding 4 0 lead. Going to the final stages of this Continental Cup quarter final. a nice response as the Arsenal youngster gets her first touches in senior action, in senior football. And there is confirmation of that substitution. The youngster coming on for McCabe. He's had another solid shift for Arsenal. Glides inside. Finds Russo. That's a lovely touch from Russo. The fantastic sliding tackle. Some more classy stuff from Arsenal and some more heroic defending from London City Lionesses.
2011, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2018, and then last year in 2023. Six League Cup titles for Arsenal. Could they be on for a seventh in 2024? It's been a convincing victory tonight. Villa at home next. Harlem Ward's side beginning to find their feet after a slow and sticky start to the new season. There was controversy, of course, about their progress in the Continental Cup. Ironically, these two linked. The Arsenal player, Noel Moritz, who played three times for the Gunners, yet appeared for Aston Villa in a game which I shouldn't have been playing in. And Aston Villa's win was taken away from them and awarded to Sunderland. Manchester United exited the competition as a result. And as fate would have it, Villa and Arsenal will meet where it will not be involved. Another change to be made for London City Lionesses. Lee Farrelly will be coming on for the hosts. Lois Joel, the skipper. Hands her armband over. Farrelly coming on for the home team. Another Republic of Ireland international. Previously played for Glasgow City in the Scottish Women's Premier League. clattering and coming together. Arsenal wanted the advantage played. Instead, it gets pulled back. And the referee wants a word with Culver. Or Cohen, the substitute, rather, who gets the yellow card for that challenge. Final minute of the 90. Arsenal with the ball. Arsenal with the progress to the semi finals. Met 
Villa back in October. 2-1 victory on that occasion. A memorable day at the Emirates. Two goals in injury time secured that victory. As the injury time goes up now. Six minutes is all we have left the here. The delivery comes in. And it hits the crossbar. Russo with the cutback. It's all the way over. Bounces kindly for Arsenal who can keep this attack alive late on. display from the Gunners. They haven't necessarily had it all their own way. Far from it, particularly in the first half. But some quality in the right moments. Reflecting the difference in quality that there has been this evening. For London City Lioness is the focus the rest of the season rests upon appointing a new manager and staying in the Barclays Women's Championship. Another yellow card is brandished to another London City Lioness substitute. A late flurry of yellow cards. That one issued to Maddie Wilde. for Arsenal. Leah does well. And that's nice footwork. And the shot comes in. Quick feet, quick thinking. It's not enough power to make that shot a troublesome one. Berger in the Arsenal goal has been a spectator for long durations of this encounter. Arsenal have been dominant from the off. Especially in the last 20 minutes or so. The control that the visitors have exerted on this contest. Lioness's boss Darren Smith I'm sure he'll take away as many positives as possible ahead of the visit of Durham 12pm on Sunday here at Prince's Park every team needs that confidence and Arsenal needed it too before kickoff after two losses which you don't see too often with Arsenal back-to-back -back defeats. This midweek contest coming at a good time, although it did mean that certain players couldn't feature and there's a few little injuries and niggles as well. The busy fixture schedule continues. Three days' time, Arsenal are back in action. The Emirates Stadium. We've got 
just over a minute to see out this game as Wild wins the throw in. seconds remain of this contest. Arsenal have possession. It's played up really nicely from left to right. Arsenal's defence of their Conti Cup title. Well and truly alive. 4-0 victory here this evening. Maybe time for one more go on goal. Russo's header wide at the target. As we await the referee's full-time whistle. The sellout crowd here at Princess Park. We've seen plenty of goals from Arsenal and plenty of heart from London City. goal kick draws the full-time whistle here at Prince's Park Arsenal the current Continental Cup holders progress through to the semi-finals Aston Villa at home awaits it finishes here London City Lioness is nil Arsenal four Arsenal's players congratulate themselves and exchange handshakes with their championship counterparts, London City Lionesses, who exit the competition and focus now fully on keeping their status in the Barclays Women's Championship. Scoreline highlights the difference in quality on the night. Let's take a look at the four goals that made all the difference in tonight's quarterfinal. Arsenal had to be patient for their breakthrough. Katie McCabe's corner was nodded towards goal by Stina Blacksenius and nudged in by Chloe Lacasse. London City Lionesses resilience coming to an end after a really solid hard working opening 45 minutes it was deep into added time that Stina Black Stenius latched onto this poor back pass forcing Grace Maloney off her line the penalty was given Kim Little stepped up making no mistake from 12 yards out doubling Arsenal's advantage just before the half time whistle went That goal put Arsenal in a comfortable position, one that they built upon in the second half. Laxenius again integral to Arsenal's third goal. Lacasse with her second of the evening, a well-taken strike, rifled in to the roof of the net. Arsenal made substitutions, they added some fresh legs, and with her first touch of the game, Alicia Russo nodded home the fourth. And Arsenal progress to the semi-final of the Continental Cup. The semi-finals take place across the 6th and 7th of March. Arsenal will host Aston Villa. Manchester City will take on Chelsea. And we will bring it to you all here on FA Player. Full-time at Prince's Park. It finishes London City Lionesses nil. Arsenal 4.